Hey folks, welcome back to Bennett Science. Today let's talk about heating and cooling. These are processes in which an object either gains or loses thermal energy. If you haven't already seen my video about the kinetic theory of matter, you might want to check that out first. I'll put a link in the description down below. Heating and cooling happen in three main ways. We've got conduction, convection, and radiation. Let's start with conduction. Since this is about energy being passed from one object to another, I'm going to need some help. Huh? Well, why is he the hot one? Isn't it obvious? We're close, which means that we can interact with each other. Excuse me. Since I'm hotter, I'm moving around a lot more. And since I'm cooler, I'm moving around less. But since we're so close, sometimes I bump in it. And now I'm shaking around more and I'm shaking less. And so because of that, I'm a little bit warmer and I'm a little cooler than I was. Eventually we exchange energy until we are at the same temperature and moving around about the same amount. These circles all represent atoms that are close enough to interact. They interact by electric forces pushing and pulling because of charges. So if one of these starts to shake more than the rest, nearby atoms will get pushed and pulled by that and they'll start to shake as well. We see that that motion, which started out localized just this one atom, has spread to nearby atoms and then from there spread to more distant atoms. This is conduction at the atomic scale. It's the shaking of atoms being passed on to the shaking of other atoms by contact. Once a temperature difference is established, not all materials will conduct that heat equally well. We have a metal bar on the left side that's been heated with a blowtorch at one spot, but the whole bar is starting to warm up. On the right side, a piece of PVC plastic pipe has been heated in one spot as well, and that energy stays pretty concentrated. We call materials like this insulators. Next up is convection. This one can be a little bit tricky. The quick and easy version though, when atoms move from place to place, they carry energy with them. What's tricky about this is, why do the atoms move? Well, maybe that they're forced to move by something like a fan. If you have a furnace in your house, this is how your heating system works. The air inside the furnace is heated, and then there's a fan that blows that air to the rest of your house, which carries with it energy from the furnace. So it's not just the air right next to your furnace that gets warmed up. This motion can actually happen all on its own, too. When something like a fluid, that is a, a gas or a liquid, for example, gets heated, it will tend to expand a bit. And when it expands, it becomes larger, it takes up more space, but it doesn't become any heavier. And so it's getting a little less dense in that process, too. If it becomes less dense than its surroundings, it will start to float upward through those surroundings. As it floats upward, it carries energy from the heat source with it. Now, as it gets higher, it's going to encounter some of the cooler fluid and start to conduct energy to that other fluid and cooling. As it cools, it will contract again, becoming more dense. Once it's denser than its surroundings, it will sink back down. If it gets back to its heat source, that whole process will repeat. And so we get these fluids that follow these kind of circular or oval shaped patterns. We call these convection currents. Whenever you feel wind outside, you're feeling those convection currents. The sun heats the ground and the air near the ground rises up, drawing other air in and you're feeling that air movement. Of course, sometimes you accidentally shoot on a really still day. You might also have noticed these convection currents while you're cooking macaroni and cheese. The thermal camera does a nice job showing us where the hot parts of the water are, rising up in the middle from the bottom and then spreading over the surface of the water as they cool. Steam rising off your morning coffee would be another example of convection. Next up, we've got radiation. Now, people have a very specific and scary idea of what radiation is. It's the stuff that we have left over after a nuclear bomb, or uh, the stuff we have to worry about with waste from nuclear power plants. And 
That's true, but it's, it's much more general than that. To radiate just means to be sent outward in all different directions, and so things like light bulbs are constantly radiating energy. They emit electromagnetic radiation uh, in the visible part of the spectrum. But everything that you and I encounter on a daily basis is emitting electromagnetic radiation, most of it in the infrared range. Our eyes aren't sensitive to that, but uh, a little thermal camera here is. So everything is emitting this, this energy as little discrete bits that we call photons. Now these photons travel through space and they carry energy with them. They can send that energy over vast distances, like say all the way from the sun to us here on the Earth. When an atom emits a photon, it loses the energy. Whatever energy that photon carries has to come from somewhere, and so it gets lost by that atom itself. Now, while that photon is moving through space, it carries energy. The atom that it started from doesn't have that energy, nor does any other atom. But it may eventually run into another atom, get absorbed by that atom, and then now that atom possesses that energy. So the energy has been transferred from one atom to another in the form of a photon going across space. This emitting and absorbing of photons is kind of like a game of catch. Go out with a bit of a twist. You see, I don't start out with a ball, and the atoms don't start out with like a stockpile of photons. They just have the energy associated with their electron positions and their motion, and then they lose some of that energy. The electrons change position, they stop vibrating so much, and suddenly this photon appears. I don't have a ball, and yet I throw a ball, I throw a photon, and as soon as I leaves my hand, I have less energy. When I catch the ball, the ball doesn't hang around, the photon disappears, but the energy is still there. I have the energy from that photon, even though I'm not holding on to it anymore. About to step out into the sun in my black t-shirt, and now I'll go out in my white t-shirt. And in just 30 seconds, we can see a 10 to 15 degree temperature difference because the black shirt absorbs more of that radiation from the sun. And that's it. We've got heating and cooling happening by conduction where the atoms that are shaking nearby collide with each other to pass that energy from one to the next. We've got convection where atoms move place to place and carry that energy with them. And we've got radiation where an atom emits a photon of light, a little bundle of energy that goes through space and can eventually get absorbed by some other atom giving energy to it. Thank you for sticking with me all the way to the end. Please do me one more favor, help out the channel by liking this video and subscribing. And also make sure you click the little bell icon so you get notifications when I post something new. And I really hope I'll see you here for the next one.